Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Johnson and I'm the CEO here at Cherryland Electric Cooperative. For those of you who pay attention to Michigan politics, you may have heard that the Michigan legislature passed a set of sweeping energy bills last fall. Uh, the most ambitious of those bills is a requirement that 100% of Michigan's electricity must come from clean energy sources or non-carbon emitting sources by 24. The bill number on that is SB 271 if you want to look it up. It sets intermediate targets for renewable energy specifically, uh, wind and solar primarily, requiring that 50% of our electricity comes from renewables by 2030, 60% by 2035, and then after 2035, that remaining 40% can come from a combination of nuclear or natural gas with carbon capture technologies. Uh, I do think it's important to point out there really hasn't been a lot of success in the full commercialization of natural gas with carbon capture, so it's unclear whether that technology will come in line with the timeline to meet the goals. Um, so to start, I thought I would talk about how this bill is likely to impact Michigan in general, and then I'll talk about the co-op more specifically. There are really three ways I think this is going to impact Michigan. First, in this next 10 years, we're going to see a tremendous build out of renewable energy and primarily solar. If, uh, if we were to try to meet this target, uh, the 60% requirement by 2035 with just solar, you would have to cover 330 square miles of land with solar panels. That's enough solar panels to stretch one mile wide from the Mackinac Bridge to Ohio. <laughs> uh, so it, we're, I think we're going to all see and feel that renewable development because it's going to happen in a really kind of short period of time over the next 10 years. The second thing that we're going to have to grapple with is that most of these projects will be built in a high inflation, high interest rate environment they're gonna be more expensive than they would have been to build five or 10 years ago. And that's gonna drive up the cost of the project, which will lead to uh, pressure on electric bills. And then third, the aggressive timelines in this mandate are uh, kind of, they force the rapid re replacement or retirement of these always available generating resources like coal and natural gas with these variable electric generating resources like wind and solar. And given that we are already identified as an area of high risk for rolling back blackouts due to insufficient electric generation, I think this should, um, give all Michiganders some pause because it is going to increase our risk of having some grid-related reliability issues as we navigate that transition between now and 2040. Uh, so let me now talk about how this will impact your co-op. This is where there is actually a little bit of a silver lining. Your lobbying team at our statewide association was able to successfully lobby for a provision in the bill that will allow us at the co-op to count the output of Palisades nuclear power plant toward both the renewable portfolio standard and the clean energy standard. So we get to start counting nuclear towards the 60% plus the 40%. That's gonna give us a lot of flexibility, but most importantly, when Palisades comes online, it's also gonna give us price stability and certainty for you. I wanna acknowledge that this was a really big win for our cooperative. It was supported by the governor and the legislature, and it reinforces the long-term vision we have for Palisades and the importance it's gonna play in us helping our co-op and our members navigate uh, the next, you know, 17 years as we move towards this um, clean energy standard. You will hear me say frequently that good energy policy balances three needs, affordability, reliability, and environmental impact. Uh, I, I just want to acknowledge that the reality is that the policies passed last fall do destabilize that balance by focusing almost exclusively on environmental impact. Not that environmental impact's not important, but that there's not balance in how these bills were written. So as we begin working towards these ambitious clean energy standards, I would just encourage all of you to continue to remind your elected officials how important electric reliability and affordability are to you, how those things impact you in your daily life, because we want to see future energy policy in Michigan better balance those three needs. And I think as we begin working towards these goals, we're going to start to see pressures on reliability and affordability that we need to be um, communicating with our elected officials on. So that's where we're at right now. We'll continue to keep you updated as, uh, as, as we keep working towards these goals and as we start to see the impact of this legislation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and thank you for taking the time to listen in.